What's up guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of Bonsai U. In this episode, we're gonna be repotting our largest 1C juniper here at Ace AN. Okay, one more time, I'll sit you down. There you go. Okay, okay, okay. All right, in this episode, we're gonna be looking at our largest tree here at ASA, and this is a Juniperus monosperma, or 1C juniper. It was collected in the New Mexican desert about five years ago at an elevation of about 4,500 feet. Now, I originally styled this tree for our online advanced course with Bonsai Empire, so I'll put a link in the description down below so you guys can check that out and see how I actually initially built this particular bonsai. Well, in this episode, what I wanna do is repot this tree, but this plant right here weighs about 800 pounds currently, so it's gonna be a bit of a challenge. And I thought it'd be a fun sort of exercise to go through with you guys in showing you the mechanics behind actually repotting a large tree like this in a bonsai you episode. So what I've done is enlisted, of course, our apprentice here, Cameron Carlson, and a local friend of the garden, John Cole. They're coming over today. They're gonna help me build essentially what amounts to a gantry crane above this thing. We're going to reduce the weight of the root ball, lift the tree up, slide the pot underneath, and then lower the tree back down into the new pot. So if everything goes well and goes to plan, I think we're gonna have a successful day. So keeping my fingers crossed, but let's go through this together. Okay, so before the guys come over, I wanna kinda of run you through what I think is going to be the plan for building this gantry crane above this bonsai here. Now, if you notice behind me here, we've got an eight foot tall fence. Each of these fence posts are six by six posts, so 15 centimeter by 15 centimeter posts. So very heavy duty, very weighty posts. What I wanna do is actually build a gantry crane that's out just basically right over the top of the bonsai here, just a few feet out in front of our fence there. So we're actually gonna tie the gantry into the fence to give us some extra support rather than making it a standalone gantry crane. So we're gonna be using some pressure treated wood here. It's gonna be a temporary structure, so I'm not really concerned about it looking nice per se, uh, but I do want it to be you know, as structurally sound as possible. So we're gonna put a couple of six by six posts a little further out here, tie them into the fence, and then run a giant beam across the top there that we'll actually attach the pulley system to. So I'm gonna head over to Home Depot or Lowe's here, one of our local home stores, and pick up the necessary supplies Supplies, and then uh, Cameron and John should be here by that point and we'll get this thing set up. Okay, so now that we've got all of our boards cut, what we're gonna be doing is standing up these six by six posts here, basically splitting the difference front to back on the tree. That's gonna be the base for our gantry crane here. Now again, technically this isn't a true gantry crane. It's not uh, self-independent or independent from the wall here. We're actually going to attach it to this back wall. So I'm not gonna build a brace for the bottom here, uh, but what we wanna do first is stand one of these up, get it leveled out just right, attach it to the wall, and then we'll move on to the other side. So let's do that first. All right, so now that we got the vertical beam set up, the next step is to put the horizontal beam across the top. So we're gonna be using a six by six post, which weighs a butt load. That's a technical term for you guys out there. We're gonna be throwing it up on the top there. Cameron's gonna be walking up the ladder on the left side, and I'm gonna be walking up the ladder on the right side. We'll get it set up there, try to level it out as much as possible, and then attach it to the two vertical beams. So keeping our fingers crossed that this works.
Okay, so now that we've got the horizontal beam attached up at the top there, to stabilize this thing a little bit better, we're gonna have to put some diagonal boards on here to keep it from tilting from side to side when we actually lift the load. So the next thing here is gonna be to cut the proper lengths here to go on a diagonal from this vertical board right here up to the horizontal board up there at the top. Okay, now that we have the structure all built and set up, we're gonna be attaching a chain hoist up at the top there to actually lift the tree up. So, I picked up this chain hoist yesterday at Harbor Freight. Now, I know you shouldn't be going out during the coronavirus, but, you know, priorities here. So, we're gonna be attaching this up at the top there and then lifting the tree up. Now, this thing is rated for one ton, so 2,000 pounds. The tree behind me here is not anywhere close to that weight right now. And, of course, it's gonna get even lighter as we remove some of that soil down below. So, I'm confident that this thing will actually lift this tree up. What I'm not so confident in is our structure. So, we're gonna find out once we actually start pulling this guy up into the air if our structure is gonna stay up or if it's gonna crumble. So, let's put this up at the top first though. So you're probably wondering where we found a pot big enough for this tree. I gotta tell you it wasn't easy to do but we managed to find the perfect fit for the giant monster here. All right, so this is going to be our pot for the big monster here. Now this pot originally was imported into the United States from China. It uh, was purchased out of Florida and we brought it up here to Tennessee to pot up the big guy here. Now this thing right here weighs a freaking ton by itself and we've actually set it on top of a pallet here to make this whole process a little bit easier. What we're gonna do is actually take a lot of the soil, as I said before, off of the root system of the tree here to make it easier to lift. We'll lift it up, we'll slide this whole thing underneath there with the pallet underneath it. That way, once we lower the tree back down and pot it up, if we ever do want to move it, all we got to do is come in with a bobcat uh, or something that we can lift the tree up using you know, forks, basically. So it should be very, very simple, very, very easy to move going forward. Now, the next step here is going to be to prep this pot. We're going to be using 4.5 millimeter aluminum or aluminum wire to tie the tree in. And then we're gonna get into actually working on the root ball itself. And I'm gonna sort of take you through the process of what that looks like, because this tree, having come from the New Mexican desert, it's in essentially a clay type soil, sort of clay sand. It's almost like peanut butter now though, that it's wet because we water it on a regular basis. So it gets a little bit tricky and gross getting all of that stuff out of there. So I wanna show you exactly how far we're gonna take that soil back, how much rootage we're gonna take off, and what the roots actually look like on this tree, having been out of the mountains now for about five years. So let's finish prepping this pot. We'll get it out of the way and then we're going to work on the root system of the tree here. Okay, so the next step here is gonna to be to start working on the root system here. Now, when this tree was collected, it was basically bald and burlapped. So you can see kind of the outer edge here of the root ball. This is the original root ball on the tree, and this box was built custom for this, but unfortunately the box was built a little bit too large for this particular tree. So we ended up just backfilling it with standard bonsai soil here. And I have a feeling that the burlap actually hasn't broken down very much on the interior. So I don't think any of the roots have actually grown out into these outer corners here which will work to our benefit in repotting this. That means we don't have to cut so much rootage off to get the tree to fit. But the first step is going to be to take out all of this bonsai soil that was backfilled in here about a year and a half ago. So we're going to dig into this and then see what the burlap looks like, what the condition of that is, and then what the condition of the roots are beyond that.
Okay, while well, Cameron's finishing digging out some of this dirt here, I'll show you what the root ball looks like. We actually did have some rootage growing out into that bonsai soil in the outer corners here, but not so much that it's gonna cause an issue. So we went ahead and scraped all that stuff out. And you can see that the burlap has kind of deteriorated for the most part beneath that soil. So it should be easy to get that stuff off of there. And then we can actually start working back into the root ball itself. Okay, so it's day two here in our epic repot adventure here at ASAN. And uh, today I thought before we actually got into working on the tree, I'd kind of explain why we opted to go with this type of gantry crane option rather than an engine lift or some other form of lifting the tree. I'd actually consulted quite a few of my friends in the bonsai community about the best way to kind of go about this and a lot of them recommended you know using something like an engine lift or renting you know a backhoe that we could actually lift the tree up with or a mini backhoe for example. But for me personally what I ended up deciding again was to go with this gantry crane here and that's because the structure that we've got here although it's temporary we're actually going to leave this up a bit beyond the repot here and cover this with shade cloth so the tree has a little bit of time to kind of acclimate. Now again we're doing this at the end of March beginning of April right here so this is kind of right on the edge here in Tennessee in terms of the best time to repot so I want to make sure that we're giving the tree the best environment to survive and thrive in once we do the repot so putting a bit of shade cloth we'll put a 30% shade block above this will give the tree a little bit of extra protection over the next few weeks and then eventually we'll remove that structure entirely so that's why we opted to go with this rather than an engine lift or a backhoe of some sort. All right, so it might be a little bit hard to tell in the video here, but we were able to get a majority of the old soil out around the periphery here. We've actually reduced the root ball down significantly here, and I think it's actually gonna fit in the pot without any issue at all. So the next step here is going to be to attach all of the braces to the tree to actually start to lift it up out of this wooden box here. So my biggest concern with this is that we can't really attach those braces to the root ball. We have to attach it to the tree, and the root ball is still pretty heavy, so I don't want the root ball to just crumble and fall off and tear away from the plant. So a little nervous about that, but I think we'll be all right. All right, so now that we got the tree lowered down into the pot here successfully, we're backfilling with Aoki blend soil. So this is a mix of Akadama, lava and pumice or kiryu basically, which is kind of a river sand. Uh, so it's essentially two parts akadama, one part of each of the other elements there. So we're gonna be working this soil in as much as possible up underneath and around the root ball to allow for those new roots to expand into that area. And hopefully this thing will stay in this pot for a minimum of seven or eight years. There's plenty of space for the roots to grow out. So I think uh, it's gonna be able to stay in here for quite a long time. So we're gonna get that soil worked in next and then we'll show you the final shot. All right, so here's the final product after all of the engineering and hard work. I want to thank John Cole, our uh, local bonsai guy here in Nashville, for coming over and helping us out. I'll put a link in the description down to his website so you can check that out at some point. Thanks to Cameron as well for helping us out with this project. If you like what we do here at Bonsai U, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you want to donate to us, click on the link down in the description. It'll take you over to my website and you can donate to help support us going forward. Till the next episode, take care.
자, 그래. 자, 그래. 그래. Got it. You're good. You're good. Okay. All right. You okay? Can you lift from there? All right. One, two, three. Get yours up. Okay. All right. Just hold it there. I'm like, let's take it down. <laughs> okay, so it may be a little bit hard to tell in the video here because of the shadows, but we were able to get a majority of that old soil out as I break the gins on the tree here. All right, let's do that again. All right, ready? Go. So you might be wondering how we're gonna find a pot big enough for this tree, but uh, I gotta tell you, we were able to sort I say that in a very Chinese accent. Push it back. Oh God, oh God, oh God, don't tip it at all. Holy <laughs> Oh my God. All right, let's see how that works. Oh <laughs> how the hell am I gonna get out of here? Okay, all right. Let's see how cheesy that was. <laughs> <laughs> 